Hey guys and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to do custom update detection with the YOLO V8 model. So this model was just released a couple of days ago. We're going to train it on our own custom data set. We're going to use RoboFlow. We're going to actually like have a data set uh, which we labeled with bounding boxes around our objects. We're going to detect different mocks in our images. Then we basically jump into Google Colab. I'll show you how you can actually like train your own custom YOLO V8 model. It is actually like fairly easy to do. I'll show you the whole process. I'll show you how to export it and how we can actually like import in our own Python script. And then inside of our Python script, we're going to run real time inference with our own custom trained YOLO V8 model. So I'm gonna jump straight into Google Colab. I'm going to show you the blocks of code that you need to run to actually like run and train this YOLO V8 model. We're going to do validation on the model and then I'm going to show you how we can actually like export it. We're just going to download the model that we have trained here um, in Google Colab. And then we're basically just going to export the model. I'm going to show you how we can load it into our own Python script. Uh, so you can guys can play around with it and you can actually like use it in your own projects and applications. So first of all here, I've just connected the runtime to the GPU. First of all, we'll just verify that we actually have access to the GPU for the training because this will just speed up our process a lot. Then we need to pip install Ultralytics here, which will basically like be installation of YOLO V8. So inside this Ultralytics, uh, we have the YOLO V8 model. If you're not familiar with the YOLO V8 model, I have another video where I actually just went over uh, the GitHub repository. I showed you how we can do live inference on a pre-trained model. But here we can see that we have now installed the YOLO V8 model and now we are actually like ready to use it. So here we can just import the different kind of modules from Autolytics. We're going to import YOLO, we're going to import OS and some display here. So we can actually like display our predictions with our model. So here we're just going to run this block of code and now we should actually like have all the modules um, imported that we need. So the new YOLO V8 model here from Autolytics is actually like set up uh, really, really nicely. Because we just have this kind of like YOLO format, we just have like this whole code, code structure uh, where we have the YOLO files and basically you just run these YOLO commands here into the Python scripts. You can pass in different kind of like arguments to it, uh, methods and modes and so on. So now we can actually just, first of all, before we act like going to train our model, we will just see how to do inference um, on a single example with a pre-trained YOLO V8 model. So basically we're not just have this YOLO command here now from the YOLO, uh, YOLO, uh, YOLO V8 repository um, from Autolytics that we just pip installed. Then we can just set the task here equal to detect. So then we will like, like do optic detection. We can also do instant segmentation and classification with the YOLO V8 model. I'm going to create another video where we're going to train our own custom instance segmentation model as well. And then we're going to use it in our own Python script. So then basically we just set the mode here equal to predict. We have the model equal to the YOLO V8 nano model. We can also choose a small model, medium model, large model, and so on. We can set up a confidence score here. So we basically just filter out like um, predictions with a low confidence score. We can also like increase this. And then we just set the source here equal to the image that we actually want to make a prediction on. You can also do like, for example, a webcam here if you just specify zero, but then you will have to have it in your own environment and on your local computer. Uh, but basically here, we're just going to run it to see an, a, a single example, and then we will train our own YOLO model on our own custom data set. So that will be way more exciting than just showing this example. But here, I'm just going to show you how we can do appearance on a single example with a pre-trained YOLO V8 model. Then the results here are saved to runs um, slash detect slash predict. And then we can basically just go in uh, and specify the file name here for that and show it as an image uh, here in Google Colab. So here we can see the predictions, we get a doc, we get a, a person which is actually like a really low confidence score uh, for the doc. And it also like extends the boundary box all the way to the bottom. We also detect the car in the background. So again, we get some really nice predictions. We can like here again, we're using the nano model. We can also use like the larger models and, and so on. And we'll get way higher accuracy and confidence in our predictions. So let's now train the YOLO V8 model on a custom data set. First of all here, I'll go inside my RoboFlow account. You can basically just go in here as well, take one of my data sets, or you can go to the universe where you can basically like find all the public data sets. When we're doing optic detection, you can just press like optic detection here, and then you will get all the different kind of like optic detection uh, projects that is available here publicly in the RoboFlow universe. Uh, you can basically just go in, take one of them, uh, export the data set as I'm going to do now. But then basically we just go inside our uh, RoboFlow project. In this example, we are doing cop detection and I have this version two. Then we can basically just go in here, hit export inside of our projects. 
we have the YOLO v8 format, show downloadable code, and then we hit continue. It will then zip our folder and we can basically just take this code, copy it and paste it into our Google Colab. And then we can specify the path to that, um, to that folder inside of our notebook. So if we just go back here again to our training of the YOLO v8 model, we can then just specify copy paste in uh, the data set. Then when we actually want to do detections, I'm just going to run these blocks of code. So here we download the data set, it will unzip it and we will get it over here to the left in our directory. We can also then run the detection mode here. We can run train. So we hit, we want to do optic detection. We can set the mode equal to train. We just specify the model that we want to train as well. So here we can actually just try with this with the media model. And then for data set, we basically just have our data set variable from RoboFlow. So this will be our data set variable up here. We can specify the location for that. And over here to the left, we can now see that I have my data set. So we have cop detection version 2.3. We have a test set, train set, and a validation set. So this is basically all the images and also the labels for our objects that we want to train our custom YOLV8 model for. So again, we just specify the data set location, uh, the number of epochs we want to train it for, and also our image size. Then when we want to train our model, we just run this block of code. Again, this notebook here will be available on GitHub. There's a link down in the description. So basically just go check that out, copy paste it, run it on your own custom data set, export the model, and then use it in your own applications and projects. So this is actually really easy. It's really cool that we can set it up so quickly, run object detection models, and, and even like just train these models here, the data sets, you can just label your data sets with row flow, export them and use it in your own projects. So here we're just going to run for, for the epochs. First of all, we get a summary of our model. We have a bunch of convolutional layers, um, concatenation layers, we do some upsampling and so on. We can see the optimizer. So we're using SGD with a learning rate of 0 0.01. Um, and we can also see some um, da uh, data augmentations here. We can see the validation set. Um, and then we will basically get the training down here at the bottom. So here we can see that we have epoch one of 30. Uh, we can see we get a box loss, class loss, um, and some instances. So how many instances are we actually detecting? Uh, we also we will also get some uh, some information about the mean average position of 50 and also mean average position 50 to 95 in intervals of five. So this is the most important like uh, like metrics to look at um, mean average positions. So we basically just we can basically just see here that our mean average position is actually like increasing for. Uh, for each epoch that we're training. And again, we're using the medium YOLO v8 model. Uh, so now we will just let it run for three epochs. We'll go back again, show some results and how to actually like export this uh, model and also do validation of it. So now our model is done training for 30 epochs. We can basically just see the results here at the end. We get some really, uh, really nice um, results. Uh, if you just go to epoch 30 out of 30, uh, we have it up here. We can see that we get really high. Um, we have we get really high mean average position 50 and also really high mean average position 50 to 95. We get around like uh, uh, an average position of 87 and over here to the right, we also get like 0.58 here for the mean average position of 5 to 95. If we just compare this with the benchmark of the YOLO v8 model uh, on the Cogger data set, they get around like 0.45 in this metric here. So these are some really nice results. We can also just see down uh, for all the classes that we're trying to detect in our object detector. We get some really nice results with really high precision. The, the results are saved in runs detect uh, train. So we can basically just go inside that. So this is the, the file directory um, for that. So we have the content run detect train. And then we're here, we're just going to show the confusion matrix. So in the confusion matrix, we will have our, um, we will have our true labels down uh, at the x-axis. And then we have to predict the labels on the y-axis. We can see that we get some really nice detections for that. We have some problems with this cup with the with a lowercase c because this is a, like some kind of like redundant class. There, There's like, there's only like a couple of samples in that. So it's really un underrepresented in our data set. We can also go in and see that inside of our uh, RoboFlow uh, data set. So if you just go down to the health check, we can see that this cup here only has like 10 and uh, like nine 
a nine sample. So this is an, an error in the data set. You will go in and correct for that. And also just a standard cup here with the uppercase C. Um, we only have 42 samples. So this is underrepresented. Um, this is an underrepresented class in our data set. But this is actually a really good confusion matrix. We can see the rest of the classes. It is really confident about that. And then we can basically just show uh, the training results as well. Uh, so here we should be able to see the training graphs. You can also get all these uh, files in if you go inside the runs, detect, and then we have our uh, train. And then you will basically see all both the, the F1 precision recall curve, the confusion matrix, and then the results that we're showing right now. So you will have that inside your train folder. So we'll just close this one here, and then we can see that the box loss is still decreasing and hasn't really like, converged yet. We get a really nice decline in our box loss and also the class loss. We can see the precision. It is really stable up here. We'll get the mean average precision. It is kind of like converged here around like 80, 83. Uh, here for the, for the other metric for the mean average precision of 50 to 95, we can, still, we can see that our um, average precision is actually still increasing. So we could train for more epochs and get actually uh, we can get better results, but we already have some really nice results. So we're just going to go with that here. We're going to run the validation mode. So we basically just set the mode equal to validation. And now we, we just specify the weights that we want to do validation of. So this will be our train weights and then the best. So these are also the weights that we're going to export. I can just do that right now. And we, again, we just specified the, the path to our data set. So if we go to the folder to the left, we can then see under our train, we have the this weight file. We can get the best uh, best weights here. So the best results for the metrics uh, while we have been training our neural network or our v 8 model. So if you were going to train it for like 100 epochs and so at some point like around like 50 epochs, it doesn't really learn more or it, it, it starts to increase in loss and decrease in performance again, you can just uh, go in here and take the mo best model throughout the whole training process. If you just want to get the last model, you can also take that. But here we're going to go with the best model. You just right click and hit download. Then it will download to your computer and then we can import that into our own Python file and run it with the new like Yolovi Yolovi 8 architecture in our own custom Python file. And we will actually like, be able to run it in real time as you're going to see in just a second. So here we will just download this model to our computer. We can go inside and just run the validation mode. Again, I'm just going to run this block of code for the object detection. And here it's basically just passing all the images uh, through our validation or like through a model for our validation. And then we should get some outputs down here at the bottom. So again, we get some really nice uh, precision, mean average positions on our, uh, on our classes for our validation. So after we have validated our model, we can now set it to prediction mode. And then we basically just do predictions on images that has not been trained or validated on. We set the task equal to detect and the mode we set that equal to predict now. We basically just, again, we specify the, the path to the best weights and then also um, the data set location for our test images. And we also set up a confidence score uh, threshold. So here we're just going to run this code, code with this YOLO command. And then after that, we can just go down, have a follow running through a bunch of images and show the results to ours. Um, so here the results are saved in runs detect on uh, slash predict two. If you want to get these images, again, you can go inside the folder. Uh, you'll get inside runs. Uh, detect and then predict two and then we will get all the images here you can download them or just show them directly um, in the tab if you double tap uh, but here we're just going to show it with code we're just going to show three examples and then uh, we can basically just run this block of code so now we can see the results we get a really nice prediction of the white cup here even though it is seen from ab above uh, another example here is the cocky cup uh, cup the standard cup with a really high confidence score we have the hand painted cup uh, halloween cup and the white cup uh, if I just scroll a bit up here, let's try a couple of more examples. So let's go with five. Uh, and it will basically just run the predictions and visualize the results. So again, you can just see that these results here are really nice. We have the standard cup, we have the cocker cup, white cup, hand painted cup, and the Halloween cup. And all of them has had a like really high um, confidence score. So now when our model is actually exported, we can go inside our own Python script. Then we can actually go in and do live inference with a webcam. We'll just open up a webcam, do live inference on this custom object detection data set. And then we're going to see some really nice real time results. So when I jumped into Visual Studio, I'm going to show you how we can actually run this live inference. I basically just export the model, I downloaded it and just specify the path here to, uh, to the model. And I just renamed it to Cup Detector. Here with this YOLO from Ultralytics import YOLO, we're basically just going to, to specify the path to our model and then it will load in 
uh, it will load in the model and we can call this predict method um, on it afterwards. We can specify the source. You can either have like a video um, image, uh, we can have folder with images or we can specify this zero and it will then use um, the webcam. We can set show equal to true. So, so this function basically just takes in all like the command uh, the command arguments that we did in Google Colab as well. So we have to predict, we specify the source, uh, to show we want to visualize the results that we're doing on our live webcam. And we can also specify the confidence score. So if our confidence score for the predictions are is greater than like uh, 0 0.5, uh, then we'll visualize the predictions. And if they're lower than this threshold, we'll just discard the detections. So this is basically everything you need to do. In another video, I'm going to show you how we can actually like, modify um, this, like this, detection predictor class up here at the top and how we can export export the results ourselves using our own applications and all those different kind of things. So definitely hit make sure to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video uh, so you can notify it when I upload another video where we actually like, see how we can modify this code for our own applications and projects. I'm also going to create a video where we have a tracker where we basically track these objects uh, that we are that we're detecting in our image. But here, basically, we just run this predict mode, uh, predict function on the model. And now I'm going to run the program and then we can just see the results. So this should be able to run in real time. I have an NVIDIA RTX 4090 card. Um, we can see all the parameters. Here we can see the, the inference time. So here we have around like five, uh, five milliseconds. So in my uh, five milliseconds, so that is around like 200 hertz. So this actually runs on 200 with 200 frames per second. And again, this was the medium model that we trained. So here we can see the predictions. We just have the webcam up here running. Sometimes it gets some false predictions. It detects this as a cop, but with a lo really low confidence score. I'll just take the webcam down here and then I'll grab a bunch of cops or mocks. And then let's see if we can actually like, do a uh, live inference on the actual like, objects that we have trained the models on. So here, if I just turn the webcam around, we should be able to detect these mocks. So here we can see we have the hand painted cup, we have the Halloween cup, uh, and we also have the cocktail cup. We can see here we have the wine cup, and we should be able to detect the standard cup as well. This was underrepresented in our data set. Sometimes it loses track. Maybe we should try to take it a bit further out. It's not really that happy about this, um, this standard cup. Just try to move it a bit over here to the left. So here we detect it as the as the standard cup, uh, but with a really low confidence score. Yeah, so so all these other cups here are really nice. We can see that we can run in real time. We add around like five milliseconds. So this is 200 frames per second. Uh, I have a, f a 40, 490 RTX and from Nvidia. So this is actually like a really uh, crazy graphics card, but you can run this on like um, just standard GPUs and you can even run it, run it like CPUs. You can have different frameworks to export uh, your models. Your V8 also supports that. This is, these are just some really nice results. Let's just take this cup up and try to like play around with it. Uh, and we should be able to still get some, some detections. So we can see we have this cocky cup detection. Let's see if we can get it from above. We can really detect it here. So yeah, we detect the, the yellow color here is the cocky cup. Uh, it is really hard to see that this act like a cocky cup just from above here. Um, but when we move it around, it is able to actually like detect this as a cocky cup. Again, really crazy model. Like these models here are so fast. You just saw how fast it was to actually like go in, train it in Google Colab, export the model, and then just throw it into in here to your own Python script, and then you can play around with it. So this is actually like a really cool model. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things. I hope you guys are going to create some really nice projects on your own custom data sets. Definitely throw it down in the comment section if you have some nice ideas of what we should try to do with these YOLO 8 models, and also if you get some really nice results. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm doing these computer vision and deep learning tutorials where we go over the basics about computer vision, deep learning, how to train neural networks, what are the different kind of like high parameters, um, how is neural networks actually like trained. So if you're interested in that, I'll link to one of the tutorials up here or else I'll see you next video guys. Bye for now.